okay, we have this chain rule problem to work through, and we have the setup that z is a function of x and y. In turn, though, x and y are both functions of s and t. So it's conceivable to rewrite um, the function z to be a function of s and t. Replace every x with a g, replace every y with an h. And now z can be written in terms of s and t, and so it's conceivable to think about then z's derivative with respect to s and z's derivative with respect to t. And so uh, the formula for the chain rule says, okay, if you want to take z's derivative with respect to s, you first have to take z's derivative with respect to x and multiply it by x's derivative with respect to s. Then z's derivative with respect to y and multiply it by y's derivative with respect to s. Okay, now we have to deal with some 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 um, problems here with this. Um, this here is just to tell you that when s is one and y is t, g is a three, and and h is a six. And so the way it's going to work out, then if we're trying to think about z when s is uh, one and y is two, we got g of 1, 2, and h of 1, 2, what comes out is a 3 and a 6. So it's, um, so z would be equal to f at 3, 6. Okay. So, so, so then we could take partial derivatives there, and they have them listed here. They'll be at 3, 6. These other derivatives will be at at one two. They're they're s and t derivatives. They're when s and t are changing, and so um, they're at one two. While these derivatives are at three six. So just everything works out. Now, um, when I have this symbol up here, it's going to be f sub x. So this guy z x is f sub x. It's a seven. This guy, zy, is f sub y. It's an 8. Okay. This guy, x with respect to s, because x is g, that's this negative 1. We multiply there. And then y with respect to s, since y is h, we get a negative 5. And so we're going to get a negative 7 and a negative 40. We're going to get a negative 47 there. Then, um, then we have uh, the z derivative with respect to t. And so... Um, we have this guy here. We're going to add to that. Um, but these guys are the same, though. This, this is still an x derivative. This is still the y derivative of z. So this is still a 7, and this is still an 8. But now we're taking t derivatives of x and y. That takes us down here, t. That takes us over here, t derivatives of x and y. So, the, um, so it's x is g. This gives us x with respect to t. That's a, a 4. This gives us y with respect to t, which is h here. Um, that's a 10. So that's going to be your 28 and your 80, or your 108. In the end, they want us to add these together. So partial of z with respect to s plus partial of z with respect to t is negative 47 plus 108. I think that's a 61. Okay. So it's the chain rule question. Um, this is an application of the chain rule where you have a multivariable function and then inside those, those variables are also multivariable functions. Okay. All right, great.